if you if you do reach this position though something like 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 one of these positions um always remember that you're going to be looking to tunnel everything is looking towards this king and opening up these lines if possible and if you're mm -hmm. too slow you're too slow but most likely you're going to end up in a 50 50 spot where you're going to win the game or you're going to lose you're, you're basically going to win the game by force or or, or like lose the game so you get checkmated but you turn it into a 50 50 where if your opponent uh does not checkmate you you're going to checkmate them hey how's it going hello how are you doing good good how about yourself i'm doing great didn't get to watch many of the pog champ matches i watched like half of the xqc and hutch one seemed like xq was holding on pretty well i heard hutch one but it didn't get to catch the ending unfortunately yeah but... i mean it was a it was a very uh long long game actually it was like 50 moves almost i think it was one of the longest games in the tournament oh, wow so well, that's good good for xqc to hold up because hutch is like actually pretty tough yeah well i mean aren't you gonna play hutch if you win against void boy uh yeah let's you know one game out of a time one game at a time hakar okay <laughs> <laughs> well hey you're the one who was so confident man come on where's where'd that confidence go <laughs> not confident boy boy is just obviously like he's probably the favorite to my favorite at least from what i've watched i think he's probably the best player in the tournament okay and, okay you know, well i mean I'll, you're, I'll you're gonna get to chances so mm -hmm. all right so so first things first it's it's two games right so you play with white and black right sure you probably know more than me i don't know nothing uh, I, I think I think it is. Um, okay. So so yeah so all right so so basically, um, Void Boy's been playing the Accelerated Dragon. I guess first question is, do you know what that opening is? No, I don't. Okay. So so e4 is played here. So c5, right? This is okay. the Sicilian defense. Knight to mm -hmm. f3, and I believe Void Boy has play, been playing Knight to c6 here, if I'm not mistaken, to um, basically try to play in the center. So the next move is. Wait, is the accelerated dragon uh, black's side? Right. So, so basically, most of the time with the openings, black is the one who chooses the direction that it goes in. Okay. Okay. So you want to take the center. So I'd probably block the center by either going that. Well, normally, what you want to do is you want to play in the center. Um, so how would you open the center? Open the center up. I, I just do this, and if he takes, 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 you know, I have my pieces activated. Right, so now after pawn takes pawn. And now Void Boy will push this pawn here to g6. Okay. Is he trying to like Finchetto the dark square bishop? Is mm -hmm. that like the plan? Exactly. Okay. So I guess my plan, I could push, one, I could push this pawn, I guess, to defend, and then block the bishop from ever having an angle to do anything dirty on this line. Or I can also just ignore it and continue development i guess whether it's pulling my bishop out pushing it like here here or there right so the way that you're going to develop here is um you bring this knight out so okay. so now black is going to play bishop to g7 so now your knight is under attack here on on d4 right mm -hmm. so how would you protect it i can go there to uh well okay so i have a few i feel like i have a few moves one i can go here to defend this with like the same, you know, the same beast, but then he can just end up pushing that pawn, and since he's gonna castle king side, it doesn't really affect his pawn structure, and then I'm gonna lose my move. Or I can look to go here to defend, but then I won't be able to develop this piece in general. So I feel like maybe just putting my dark square bishop there is right. So, so the, the move that you play is bishop e3 because you don't want to give the center yeah. part of the board here. Uh huh. Okay. So, yeah. so now, um, so now let's say black moves this knight out to f6 here. Black's trying to develop. You can move the knight or you can push the pawn. It really doesn't matter on what the order is. Um, yeah. But let's just say black moves the knight here, okay? Can you say it again? Sorry. So so black moves the knight to f6. So black is trying to develop the pieces here. Yeah. Okay, so, so now you play bishop to c4. So you're mm -hmm. trying to develop the bishop. But the main thing when black puts the knight in the center here is black wants to try to open up the center part of the board with the pawn push get the knight there and then open up this long diagonal for the bishop okay yeah makes sense so so here after knight to f6 the way that you prevent this is to play bishop to c4 to stop this pawn push I see. so now black will castle the king and now the move you play here is this is this is very important by the way is that you don't castle your king here because if you castle the king here then black can play knight takes pawn knight takes knight and then pawn to d5. Ah, okay. 
And what's happening here is that basically you're going to lose the bishop or the knight because they're forked. But now black's bishop is very open on this diagonal. Yeah. And a super nice line for him. Right. So here what, you, here what you do is you play bishop to b3. So you avoid this capture. Okay. Th this is important. It's basically when you bring the bishop out right away. Uh, let, 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 me, let me try to remember why this is wrong immediately. I know it's losing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why it's losing. Okay. Is that if black tries to take this pawn right away, what you can do is play knight takes knight. Pawn to d5. Yeah. And now you go bishop to b5. And the point okay. being that when black captures the knight, what is your next move? I capture, put him in check. Or actually, no, 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 no. I capture with this. He takes with pawn. I take with this, and I win it back a piece. Well, you're winning. You're going to win a rook, basically, because I have to block, yeah, yeah. and then you just take the rook, and you, you have one rook for one bishop. Yeah. So this is really, really good for you. Uh, okay. so, so when you move the bishop out, normally what will happen is, is black will castle the king. And so now what's the correct move? If he's going to castle the king, I would put my... Drop yes, piece so the in-between, so you bring the bishop here first, and then you're looking to castle. So yeah. now what black will play is pawn to d6 to, to activate the bishop and the knight on this diagonal. Then I would somehow want to get my queen out of that angle. Or that well, angle, I guess or the way, way, way to look at this is you're going to castle your king to the king side, okay? Yeah. But the, the problem is if you castle your king here, black can move the knight and attack your bishop with the knight. So again, you want to play the in-between move before you castle the king out of the center of the board. So I pretty much I can I could do actually wait I could do that, but I think this is better, right? Yes, this is I'm better. Giving, mm -hmm. I'm giving my king like an escape. Right, and the other reason that this is the right move is because you're going to actually push this pawn to f4 down the road. Mm. So let's say okay. black goes bishop to d7 here. Now you castle the king. Castle. Yeah. Right, and now black plays rook to c8. Rook to c8. What moves do I have, I guess, is what I'm looking at. I kind of want to connect my rooks, get it activated. Could I move my queen ever, or like anywhere here, and then get this rook into the game? Get the. Well, what you five? actually should play is you should play pawn to f4 here. And it's a Why? very similar kind of idea. So, what, what you're looking to do here is basically put the queen on one of these two squares and then bring the rook to the center of the board to e1. Hmm. So, okay. I'm, I'm trying to think of ways it... that this can. Mm hmm. I'm not used to this, I guess, to me. To me, I always have my kingside pawn structure like this. Like, I either have my pawns where it's all of them on the two line, or it's like F, G2, and then H3. I never, okay. like, move my kingside pawns, and I don't really know when I should, I guess. Okay, if you don't like this... No, no, I, I'm fine with it I, as long as I understand it. To me, to me, as long as I get an understanding of why it's good, I'll be able to understand it and Okay, let, let's, back, in let's, <clears throat> let's back up a second. So... What do okay. you think your chances are? Let's start there. In this situation or against No, 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 Floyd? in the match. Uh, if I'm playing both of us at our current skill level, I probably have like a 15% chance, I'd say. Okay, then then fuck it. Um, let's go back to the start. You'll play a different setup, okay? okay. So when black pushes a pawn to d6 here, what you what you... Oh, come on, chat, stop it. All right, so 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 Okay, <laughs> so so what I want you to do here is instead um, don't push this pawn to h3, okay? Okay. So push this pawn to f3. So you you protect the cent, cent, central pawn, but you also stop this knight to g4 move. Okay. So now what's probably going to happen is black is going to play bishop to d7. And now you're going to go queen to d2. Mm -hmm. And the reason you're going to go queen to d2 is you said you have 15% chances. So I want you to be very aggressive and try to win the game. And the ideas here are actually going to be much simpler. Um mm -hmm. Right, that's one idea. So, so black can play many setups here. I think we're. Well, I'll just go through general setups here. So, let's say black plays rook to c8. Okay. So, what's your next move? My next move to c8. Hmm, I see. So, I want. To... Is there a way to be very aggressive here? A way to be aggressive. Let me think. Takes, takes. Doesn't really give me any okay. angles. No. I can look mm -hmm. for that. It doesn't really give me anything. This piece is kind of stuck here. I can look here. No. Maybe I. Push okay, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what it is. What you're gonna do okay. is you're gonna castle your king here, to the queen. Ah, oh, I see. Yes. So basically, this is a very straight straightforward idea, and I'm I'm not even gonna necessarily go like move by move, but I'm just gonna show you basic ideas. Mm -hmm. So what I play is not necessarily the correct move for black or the wrong move, but it's about the specific set idea. So first okay. things first, if black takes the knight, which way do you take the knight? No, because if you take with the queen, what happens here is is I can go knight g four. And do you see what's win. happening? 
Ah, oh, I see. Yes, yes, I see. So it, it's very important that when you're, if if this happens with knight takes knight, you always take with the bishop, so okay. that there isn't any sort of discovery where black can activate this bishop on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just for, gonna let you know in a warning. Void boy is currently in my chat, and he is ghosting. Just saying, I'm putting it out there. I don't know what the moderators of chess.com want to do, but I think he should get perm banned off Twitch for that. <laughs> well i'll give you more specific stuff anyway anyway later okay. um yeah, yeah but yeah so this is actually very specific to um to to, to lines and, and what i would say is even if boy boy is watching for example mm -hmm. and he like tries to memorize this stuff he could still lose because the ideas are very very straightforward someone is going to win mm -hmm. and someone is going to lose and it's not completely clear based on the move order but basically you okay. end up in a big race here where Black is trying to attack you on this side, and you're trying to attack on the king side towards the king. So both yeah. kings get attacked here. So it's just a matter okay. of who is faster. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, let's say Black trades a knight and goes pawn to b5. So now the move that you would, you would play here is pawn to h4. Can't I just take a free pawn there? Yes, you could take the pawn, but the point is that since your king is on this side of the board, Black gets a lot of counterplay by moving the queen and, and pushing the pawn, and... Um, and then later on, moving the knight and attacking on this diagonal. Okay. So, so when when you play when you play this, the whole point is just to go all in attack. So you play h4. Yes. You don't care about a pawn. It doesn't. It, this pawn doesn't matter. You're trying to checkmate the black king because you have this, these these very nice bishops um, uh, attacking towards the black king. Okay. Yeah. So now let's say black plays b4. Okay. Now my piece is under attack. Mm -hmm. I can look. Let me think. What is my best move here? I'm trying to think if there's any attacking moves. Obviously, you okay. never want to just sacrifice a piece for no reason, but... Okay, so uh, the move that you're going to play here is knight to d5. Actually, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through it because these moves are not going to be natural. Yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're not going to be intuitive. That was, my, that was my number one move there. I was just looking for other stuff. Right, so for example, let's say black takes a knight. What you will do is you will trade the bishop. Okay. Actually, no, take... take yeah, trade the bishop. Black will take, and now you, now you take back with the pawn. So now let's say black pushes the pawn to attack. I want to see how good your attacking instincts are here. Okay, well, I can go here to look to attack there, number one. Uh, or, let me see. Hmm, let me see. Hmm. Yeah, that seems like the only move, but then, then he just backs okay, so, back. Okay, so look. I gain, look. I gain, oh, oh, wait. Let me see. Hmm? Yes. I, I only if attacking move to get the check is there. That's a check, but then I, he could just actually take my piece. None of the pawns are undefended, I guess. There's this pawn that's kind of undefended, but doesn't really. It's hard to attack. I this pawn is kind of weak. Maybe I can look for this and then bring my bishop back to like hit this diagonal and then start pushing these pawns up and then get this rook activated as well. Right. So so now this is a an idea that you're going to see in every single variation of this line that you look at. So, mm -hmm. so the move that, that you should uh, play here is pawn to h5. Okay. So what what's your next move if I push my pawn to a4 here? I can, nah, actually I don't like that. I think I take, and then he has to take back, and then it, open, it like just weakens the king side, and I kind of, do I sack this piece? That's what I would say. Or, mm -hmm. hmm, I see. let me think. Oh, I see. I go here. Check. He has to move his piece. He doesn't really want to go there either, so he's probably going to go here. Then I go here, and I find mate in a second. Right. So so this is a, this is a good idea, but actually what you do is you do take the pawn. Okay. So now okay. let's say I take back the pawn. Mm -hmm. What's your next move? Right. And if I go back? GG. Right. And so now the king has to come forward here. And when the king comes forward, let me just see what the... Is there a way to win here? One second, let me just see. Okay. There, there isn't a clean way to win this game. I mean, I, I guess basically you just kind of have to... Uh, yeah, rook d4 is what I wanted to play, but I don't think it quite works. Mm. Can't, can't you just go, like, pawn up here? And then... I yeah, actually, yeah. So, so ba basically... Um, Okay, so so what I, the, the, it doesn't really matter the specific position because you, you would have to go back and then like play this move and just be much better because of the open line. But the but the point yeah. that I'm trying to make with this concept is that you want to play to open up this h6 square to bring the 
bring the queen queen forward. Yeah. Um, so, so this is, this is very important. This, this is basically going to be the overriding theme in every single one of these variations, um, of this, of this accelerated dragon. Mm -hmm. I like the name. It's kind of cool. The accelerated dragon, like all the other openings, like it's like the Roy Lopez, like dudes, dudes are just naming them after themselves, but then you got the accelerated dragon. I like that one. That's cool. Right. So, okay. So. So let's say I play something else. Let's say I don't trade the knights. Okay. Let's 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 okay. actually no. Let's let's review it. So okay. Let's let's go through it. So so what was the idea? What do you want to do here? In this situation, I would like to go here, and then if takes, then I no 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 trade. relax. Okay, take a second. Oh, yes, I see you. Hmm. Deep breath in and out. Okay, I see. Um, is that really not the I swear to God, that's what we did. Also, not the move, nope. Here. Really? Okay. What did we do? We didn't touch the rooks. We didn't touch this. This piece is still there. This piece doesn't have to move. I guess that's all. Oh, that's when it pushes. I think we went queen. Oh, misclick. Okay. Maybe queen. Remember, you want to attack something? here. You you want to attack. The kings are on opposite opposite sides of the board. Okay, so I wanted to get my pawn out. Actually, I move that pawn. Right, and so now when I push the pawn, I go here. Right, and now when I take, takes mm -hmm. and takes. Actually, you take with the pawn here, the and, the, and the reason you take with the pawn oh. and not the bish bishop mm -hmm. is specifically because if Black say pushes the pawn to h five to stop your whole attack. You can play in the center of the board with the rook, and you threaten to basically stack the rooks. And this pawn is very bad because your pawn on d5 always threatens to capture. Mm. Oh yeah, because he can't go because on passant too, right? Exactly. Yep. Very good. Very uh, good. Okay, I got. So, you. so, so when when this capture occurs, and actually, even though I play this move, uh, let, let me let me make sure on the actual move order here. Um, so here you can play h4. Yeah. Now black plays b5. And here you have to play a slightly different move because if you push this pawn, black can play pawn to a4. So what you do is you push this pawn forward to a3. Pawn mm. to b4. And now you go knight to d5. Okay. And so even black... though these pawns are, even though they're connected, it could become kind of a weakness because my, my rook doesn't have like a square. So it's good to disconnect them. Well, basically, basically, it doesn't. Basically, the point is your pawn is very strong here, and you can put pressure on this pawn on this e7 square. Okay. But you're always playing to uh, attack towards the king, and you think think about it this way: this knight is a very the knight and the bishop are the two pieces that support the black king here. Yeah. So if you can remove the knight and the bishop, and you can you can play like h5 and h6, you're you're going to be attacking, and black has less defenders. So you want to get rid of the knight and the bishop, so the king is completely open. Okay. I see. So, okay, so let's go back. So, all right. So I'm, I'm not going to trade the knights here. Now I'm going to play knight to a5. So again, how do you attack? Knight to a5. How do I attack? Uh, I can still either push the pawn up, but I don't really want to trade this, I don't think. Actually, I could when you trade, trade. Well, you can't, you can't really move the bishop here. So you, so you yeah. want to attack. So the way you attack is you push the pawn again. Yeah, that's You're always thinking. trying to attack on this side of the board. Like... What what you're you the re, the reason that I asked about how confident you feel about the match is because I figure if you play something that's very aggressive and very attacking with straightforward attacking ideas, you will have chances to make checkmates. Yeah. I so like now that. I will take the bishop, and now you will capture with the pawn, or the knight. Actually, I mean both are fine, but just capture with this pawn. Okay. Now let's say Black plays queen to a5. I'm threatening to make a checkmate, so you go king to b1 here. Okay. And now, in any of these dragon variations, just think about this queen being here. If there's no threat of, like, a checkmate right away, let's just say I play a move like pawn here. There's always a common theme in this position that um, it's not obvious to see, but I'm curious if you can see. There's a, there's a tactic here, and it's not knight takes pawn. Actually, let me make so, a different move. Let, let me push the pawn here. So there's a tactic to get the queen, pretty much, or winning the queen? There's a tactic oh. that's going to be winning material, potentially. Okay, I'll look for it. Do my research. Pawn up, do anything. 
you can't go here, you can just go ahead and retreat here. But if you ever retreat to there, then I can look for some type of attacking moves because then the queen is stuck there. But then you can also go to that square and I don't really gain anything. I guess I don't really have to just focus on the queen. I can focus on any piece that mm -hmm. is eligible for the So what, what you do here is you would play knight d5. Ah, I see. Because the point is after queen takes queen, you can always look for this tactic where you take this pawn with check and then you recapture the bishop. Can't he just, though, like, let me see here. If I move this, can't he just take and then... Thank you. I guess I win, I guess I win queen. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So he has to trade if I move that. Okay, it makes sense. And then I win a pawn. Oh. So this is always a tactic to be aware of if, um, if your opponent has the queen opposing your queen on this diagonal. Mm -hmm. So now let's say I trade. I'm going to play a different move. I'm just going to play a pawn to b5 here. So now here you do something that's that's a little bit unusual. You're going to push the pawn to h5. Okay. So let's say I take the pawn with my knight. And now you're going to go bishop to h6. And the idea the idea behind this move is that you're going to you're going to keep attacking. So you're down one pawn temporarily, okay? Yeah. So I'm just going to play a random move just so you see some ideas here. Let's say I push this pawn to a6. You can now play rook takes knight. And after pawn takes rook, what is your next move? Takes. Not takes. My next move actually is I can go here potentially because then if takes, takes, and then I have a, f you know, I don't like that. What could I do here in this situation? Oh, I see. I can go here because I have a double attack and I have mate in a second. Right. Basically, the king is, yeah. is just checkmate in one no matter what That's black been... does here. Yeah. So in this position, it's 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 really really bad. And just to give you an, another example um, of how you can attack, obviously in this specific case you can take. But one of the general attacking principles that you'll always see is you can take. Black can take. And now you go pawn to g4. Okay. So now you're attacking the knight with the pawn, right? Yeah. So he has to kick it. So now if I go here, what's your next move? Sticking to the theme, right? So now I'm going to go back here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back here and take it. No, 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 Right. Stop myself. It's cool. Um, I would look to kick his defender potentially, but then he could just take. So that doesn't mm -hmm. seem good. I should push the other pawn actually instead if he goes there and then he has to move that. Somewhere okay. Else. Look for another move. You have the right idea, but there's another move. Okay. I can go. Oh, I can go here. Exactly. And I, right. And, and actually you're, you're going to remove this defender of the knight. Here. Yeah. Yeah. If he moves it. Yeah. And this is just com completely winning for white because it's just the yeah, checkmate takes... is un unavoidable. Yeah, yeah, I see. So, so basically, this the, this is this is the whole idea around this opening is to try to attack here. So now let's say black pushes a pawn to h5. So now what I want you to play is bishop to h6, trying to get rid of this very dangerous dark square bishop. Mm-hmm. So let's say I take the bishop. Which way do you capture? I'm going to check. I Actually, no, I can capture with the pawn and then keep that piece, I guess, active. Right, because there's never any danger of your king getting checkmated, because if he ever goes like queen a5, you can always just move your king over one square, and there's no checkmate. Do I always have to move my king? Because say what if I just play like an in-between move, like let's go here, he goes here, check. Can I just go here and then both you our could, queen and the, the knight are stuck? Well, the problem is that your knight is actually a very good attacking piece. Okay. So, so because the knight's an attacking piece in a lot of these variations, you're actually going to be trying to bring the knight to remove this knight here on f6. So okay. that's, that's, that's the main reason. It's not like checkmate mm -hmm. is unavoidable, but you yeah, want yeah. to attack. I got you. So now, basically what I'm showing you is just themes, more, more than like specific, specific like move orders, but specific themes to see how you can attack. Gotcha. So okay. let's say I push upon, um, I'll just make a random move here. The idea is to attack here. Yeah. So, so you can trade the bishops, but there, there's there's another concept that I, I don't know if you can find. It. It's probably too hard. But the move is to push the pawn here. Okay. So now what's the take... natural move for black? You can capture. So what's your next move? I can also recapture. Actually, no. Do I even want to recapture that? Let me think. Was there any better moves? I guess this piece is always threatening, so I can't really capture with anything else but a pawn or else I'm at risk. But I could capture with pawn. Then I can take. 
Or wait, no, it's his move. Uh, yeah, I guess, and then I can just remove a defender soon. So no, but... that's not the move. Oh, you're already down one pawn here. Mm -hmm. The goal is Am to I... attack. Attack. Okay. Attack. Could I possibly? You need. You need. You need to play the like. If you get this opening, you need. You need to play this game like the way you talk, basically. Okay. So what? What you want to do is actually not take. You want to push the pawn. Okay. So now let's say Can't... I take the pawn. Yeah. Uh, what's my play here in this situation then? I can take with rook. Takes. 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 And then I can put takes. He's in check. He has to move backwards. He has to go into that square. And then I have mate, I think. Right? Let me see. Check. <laughs> so, takes, so the, <laughs> I mean, takes, yes, it's checkmate. It's, I mean, this is a force takes, check. Takes. Well, 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 okay, let, let's slow down. You, you actually found another checkmate that works, but what you do here is you don't actually have to take. You just go here again. It's the same checkmate as before. Oh, okay. And, and, and it's mate and one. So, like, what you're doing here is you're, you're already down one pawn, but you're threatening to open up to kingside. So let's say I, I grab this pawn here on, on f3. Yeah. I guess, like you said, I have the same theme. I can... Wait. Let me see. Huh. I see. Hmm. You take the pawn. I can. Uh, do I want to take this pawn ever? Not really. Okay. I think it... Well, no. You, I... you, remember, you're, you're behind. You've given up a bunch of pawns here. You've given up two pawns. Yeah. So I don't really care about winning back a pawn. I guess the theme is just about winning the game. The theme is about going after the Black King. Exactly. So. But I feel like pushing this pawn is good to open up this whole entire line. Exactly. So basically, when you do this, what you're arguing is that you're giving up. A, you're giving up pawns, but the Black King is very vulnerable here. And so let's yeah. say I take this. I think this is still winning. Let me see what the exact line is. Right. Um, so actually, you could do that, but this is a little bit, little bit deep. But but the move here would be to push your pawn forward. Mm -hmm. So now, what is Black's move? Only there's only one move. I have to capture the pawn, right? And so now, what you do is now you make the check. My king has to go over, and now you play knight takes pawn. So when you look at the material count, Black has one, two, three, four, five. You're down two pawns here. But your king is very safe, and um, and Black's king is not safe at all, because you're threatening to capture this pawn. You're threatening to win that one. You also have knight g5, so everything that Black has here is completely open. Whereas your king is very safe with this, these pawns and this knight right around it. Mm. I see, a little bit. So what would my play be here? I guess, or what would Black do in this situation? Even. Um, I mean, I probably would resign the game if I was playing, but I, I want you to see if you can. F <laughs> okay, show me, show me the next couple of moves. Okay. No, because I just take your knight. Okay, didn't want to do that anyway. How about we take a free piece? Oh, never mind. I don't want to do that anyway. Let's see. I would like to make a check. Okay. I would now like to make another check. Okay. I would now like, uh, let me see, what's my play? I can go here, he can't take because of that, so I like that. Let's take that and win a rook. That's checkmate, by the way. I knew it was checkmate, I was testing you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. So, so basically what ends up happening here is you make, you're, you're just trying to attack because your king is never under attack here. Your king is completely safe on this queen side of the board, but you're trying to rip open all of the protection because here black only has a bishop and a knight surrounding his king. Yeah. So, so in the, goal, the goal of this to castle opposite side of him and then just fully attack king like that's just, yeah, basically <laughs> what you do is you just castle the opposite side. Let me go back. You castle the opposite side and your idea is, okay, if black takes, you take back and you have to basically go this with this knight move to try and remove the knight and then remove the bishop. Yeah. Um, and if, uh, if, if they play, I don't know, move like this, for example, you just, again, you can just do the same thing. You do this with bishop h6, g4, h5 and take and then take and, and make the check. But the, always the goal is to open up this H file for the uh, for the rook. Okay, I got you. Makes sense. I, I got it. I think it's ingrained in my head now. Okay, so now let's see. Okay, so someone in my chat was saying, what if what if like Void Boy were to play a move like Queen to B six, trying to keep an eye on the Bishop and the Knight. So if Black ever plays a move like this, what you can do is you can move your Knight to F five here, because now you're attacking the Queen with the Bishop and your Knight guards the Bishop. Ah, nice. And then he has to move his piece. And then when he does that, 
Mm -hmm. uh, voila takes right exactly yeah and so so then then when black takes takes the knight i can either i guess look to continue attacking by pushing the pawn but if there's any better moves maybe i try to get my queen out of the center by doubling it up right here onto this line over exactly, here exactly yes inside yeah so now let's say black goes back you can't uh, can castle you... your king king side so again you do the same thing you just castle your king to the queen side and you look to attack and rip open this h file and try to create uh create pressure mm -hmm. okay so nice. so and, and also remember in if you if your opponent ever has a setup and this doesn't just apply to the game but in general if there are ever like three pawns like this and there's no bishop in in the middle here then <laughs> it's always a serious weakness long term and you should always look to attack towards the king okay got it so I'll just let me see. If there's one other. I'm just gonna give one other, one other last little bit. So, so knight here. What's your move? If it's the knight moves there, I can I guess ignore it and just push pawn. But does mm -hmm. he have any attack ideas? I don't remember the ideas are. This is where kind of you you want to actually. I guess what I would say is you really want to uh, you want to tunnel a little bit. You really only or you just need to be careful. There are no checkmates here. But you really yeah, do yeah. want to tunnel towards like both this H and this G file towards the king. Okay, I guess I'd trade that piece since I don't really care about mm -hmm. the bishop that much anyway. And then I just continue my attack. Exactly. And so now now let's say I, I take the pawn. You have to be careful. Because if you go bishop h6, I can just play rook takes knight. Mm. Okay. So what you That's would do here is something a little bit different. You bring the knight back to e2 first. Okay. So I'm just going to play a random move. So now what's your next move? Right, that's that's fine, but but first, before you do that, you can also do this one as well. Yeah. Okay. And now when I go back, now I look. Mm -hmm. Still looking for any ideas? Is there any mate threats? Takes, takes, take. There's no mate there. I guess I just take here, mm -hmm. and then I can look to push pawn to kick, but that's bad actually. This pawn would probably be better, but even then, that's not even that good. Is there any crazy moves, any threats here? His king's already weak, but I just got to make sure I don't get needed here. Hmm, let me see. I'll just check. Mm -hmm. and, and now? Let me see. There's no mate, I don't think, instantly. But there should be some type. Oh, now I kick the... Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Bad, bad, bad. I go here. Because now he either has to take with queen and then I win queen, or he takes with this and then it's mate instantly. Right, exactly. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit further just just so you see the see the idea. So now if I move the rook to c8, I'm threatening your pawn on c2. So in this case, you'd actually just take the pawn with check, and after king moves, you take the rook, and you're just way ahead here. Yeah. Can I just? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Make so sure. I'm gonna play this move, and now now the way you make the checkmate here is you push this pawn forward. Because now what happens if I capture? If you capture, I have a check. And now when I go here. And mate. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you look at this position, if you capture the knights, basically what happens is you create the square by capturing the yeah, knight. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, yes, I see. So, yeah, I see. So now you would push the pawn, so I can't capture the knight, right? Mm -hmm. So the only way that I can stop the checkmate is moving the knight here. So now the move is rook takes. I will take your brook and now find the final move in the sequence. Find the final move. Mm. Mm -hmm. Aha. Hmm. Let me think. Pawn up. He can take and then it doesn't really give me anything, so that makes no sense. I can go here, but then he could just take pawn. And I guess I win pawn back, but I don't really win anything once again. I could take here doesn't win me anything but then again he loses his rook defending the back rank but that doesn't mean anything i can get this other piece in the game is it a one move mate here it's is not one move but it's it's this is actually uh, it's just a, a theme so what you do is you go knight check okay and so what Let's happens if i'm right now what's the next move take oh i see and then i go here oh it's a wrap uh -huh. right yeah it's just it's the game's over yeah yeah okay so the, the, basically all the ideas you like normally, normally, actually, I think every other lesson I've done, this hasn't occurred. Cause it's like, it, I basically give basic setups where you can play on both sides. But when you play this, play this, uh, this opening where you castle on the queen side, especially 
you do want to tunnel. You literally only want to try and focus on this side of the board. Make sure you don't blunder anything in the middle, but you're completely focused on trying to checkmate the black king. And the idea mm -hmm. is always involved h5 and bishop h6. So, like, let's go back to this position now. So here, I if if I play, I don't know, um, what's a logical move that, that a human would play? Let's just say I move my queen to, to a5, for example. Okay. I want to make sure he can't just capture this for free ever. Uh, and he's also threatening a double attack, and then he can bring over the rook for a triple attack. So I can either look for a defending move, or I can go here and then defend this piece and then continue attacking. Mm -hmm. So actually what you would play here is you play knight here. Okay. So now, now you attack the queen with your knight, right? Mm -hmm. And also, th this is another thing. So think of it this way. Let's say I've, th the move doesn't matter here because it's kind of irrelevant, but I just want to show you. So if you were to move your bishop here, one of the big problems with this is that black can always play knight takes pawn. Okay. And if you take with a pawn, I take the knight because the bishop guards the rook. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I got that. So what you do here is make sure that there's there are no tricks like on this diagonal. So you play a move like knight b3 first. If I go back, what's your next move? Then I can now look for this. Right, exactly. Just tunneling and focusing only on this side of the board. Now if I take Actually, uh maybe I take with this first. Yeah, and when I take Um, instead of that, actually, I look for this same idea, different yeah, position, yeah. but it's the same idea with the checkmate. Okay. So when you go here, let's just say I, I move my rook here. Mm. Gotta make sure one, you know, there's not enough defenders. I guess. Wait, this is only a double attack. That's mm -hmm. fine, because I pawn and that, so I don't think I have to worry about that too much. So I take with pawn. Okay, if I take this way. And then I can take. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So what I have to do here um, is when takes, I have to take with this pawn. Mm -hmm. So what's your next move? Uh, I'm thinking of going here, but obviously this is guarding, so somehow I need to kick that piece. Maybe I pawn up here. But what if you could do that, but again, I really want you to kind of tunnel and focus. So what you want to do is you want to take, and now you push this pawn here. Okay. Can I just look for check over here? Check. Right, but there's a slight difference because of where my pawns are. Mm. Okay. And then I'd have to push, and then my queen's just there, not guarding it. Okay. Right. So basically, when you push this pawn, there, there, there's also another, another idea that you should. I'm just gonna play a random move, just, just so you see the idea. But if I push this pawn, there's always also this other idea with pawn here. And when mm -hmm. I take your pawn, what's your next move? Right, because you remove the knight, which defends the bishop. Yeah. So because you gave up this one pawn, you opened up this, uh, the D file, and now the knight is under attack here on F6. Mm -hmm. ah. So so it's a, it's a general idea. And now let's say black plays a move like b5 here. There are a couple ways to win, but I'll, I'll just show you one. So what, one way to win would be queen here. And if black was like king f7, you can play pawn to g5, attacking this knight here on f6. Yeah. And now the knight has to move to like h5. So what's your next move? Check. And now if I block... I have. What do I have any ideas? Takes doesn't make sense. This doesn't. So really remember, you sense. want to keep attacking. Yeah. How can I continue attacking this piece? I guess is my question. I can look here to the. No, that doesn't really do anything. I can't. Can I get the other pieces activated? I don't really think so. I don't know about these pieces either. Maybe bo deep. One sec. Uh, bo. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see anything. I guess most I see... most of the time when you think you don't see anything, oh, you actually pawn, have the right push pawn, idea. Push pawn and then takes, and then I can take that if he wins the pawn. Or I can continue pushing the pawn right, and get the king there, and then I win this. Normally when you're attacking, you want to play for straight straight attacks and straight threats. 
Okay, straight attacks and straight. So threats. it's like you want to play a move where you're gonna win something with your next move after that. Yeah, but isn't this that that move? Because let's say takes and takes. Right, or... but 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 I don't have to take your pawn. I just play this. And then I takes, but then takes. I see. Okay. Um... So remember when you when you when you're playing like this, you want to attack. So pushing mm -hmm. the pawn is not a bad move here, but it doesn't attack anything. This one. Does that attack anything? Not directly, no. Find the move that attacks something. Okay. How can anything attack? None of my pieces. Here, takes, takes. No, but then you can just take, so it doesn't really do anything. No. No. I think I'm stupid. So the move you play here, you saw it originally, is Rook here. Okay. Because ah, you're okay. attacking the pawn on g6. Ah. I see. That makes more sense, yeah. So so when when you're playing this this when when you're playing this, think of it this way. Like you want your your both side kings are on opposite sides. Both players are trying to attack. So you want to always try to create threats like where you're winning knights or, or you're threatening the king and threatening checkmates. Mm -hmm. So you don't really, like for example, don't you, you never really are going to have time to play a random move like a pawn push to a3 or, or a move like pawn to f4. You're never going to have this opportunity. So, so what's happened is because the kings are on opposite sides of the board, you're trying to, you're trying to go for the checkmate immediately and get to the black king. Because okay. it's basically so 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 now I'll I'll, I'll just play a random move like uh, I don't know like pawn here okay, mm -hmm. just to give you an ex an idea of just how bad this is gonna be, I'm gonna push the pawn to b4. Okay, I have to move my piece and defend. I can go here. Okay, and now I take. Uh. Oh wait. <laughs> okay. But basically, what happens is I'm. You can just we'll just play the next few moves out, so you understand. So I make the check. Okay, but I can mm. just take. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So basically, the 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 point that the point that I'm making here, you here. Yeah. Is that it falls apart instantly for you as white. Yeah. So because so you basically have to have that urgency to realize that you're you're attacking your opponent, but he's attacking you too. So you better yeah. be really fast and make attacking, make threats that are threatening the king or threatening the knights and the rooks immediately. Because otherwise, I'm going to just be just as fast when I attack your king. So yeah, you, no, so, that makes sense. So basically, you're ahead. But what I, the reason that I really think this makes sense to play is because it turns into a 50-50. Like, if your attack is quicker, most of the moves should come very natural, naturally. Um, but if you're behind, you'll lose. But if you're, if you're quicker, you're going to win. So it becomes yeah, a race... Yeah. For who gets whose king gets attacked first? Mm -hmm. So this is probably what I'm going to recommend in general terms for what you play, and you're always looking to push this pawn and trying to get rid of this bishop. So now, um, let's just I'm trying to think of another setup black can do here that makes sense. Is this only in response to the accelerated dragon, I guess. Like, I yeah, guess I, I mean, basically, yes, like... it, it is. If you, if you want to look at um. Uh, well, I guess it applies to the, the, this order as well. Not that this would happen, but D4, um, takes black can also play it in this order with like this, with this, these pawns. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now you would do the same thing. You bring the Bishop out. I'll go here. And now again, you push the pawn to stop the Knight G4 move castles. Yeah. And now you play Bishop C4 with the same idea. So what you're going to do is you're going to play queen d2, bishop b3, and castle your king and try to go for the same bishop h6 and h4 idea. Okay. So um, let me think. What else can, can occur? I'm trying to think of other setups. Um, okay, let's let's see. Let me let me make sure they're not watching, actually. Yeah, no. To me, uh, uh, like, it, it makes sense fully. I understand the setup. The only thing is, like, 
an opponent like Boy Boy and I guess like Hutch too feels like they're more dynamic in in the sense that like they'll they can switch stuff up or do different openings or play whatever different stuff they do. I haven't like researched their games, but I just that's how I feel actually from watching Boy Boy sometimes. Like feels like he plays different stuff. It's not like always like most critical. He plays E four, uh, E five, or you know what I mean, like E four, D four, something like that. Oh uh, well, every game I've seen Boy Boy play, he has actually played. Um, he has played some kind of Accelerate Dragon against at least from oh, what okay. I've seen. I'll t I'll take a look at. I'll take a look at some of the other games, and I'll, I'll give you something else as well against one of the other setups uh, later on uh, off stream, mm -hmm. just because there is one other setup that he might do that I that I have in mind. So I'll just I'll okay. mention something something to you in a DM later. But okay. I think for right now, for the basics of, of setting this up, what, this is how you how you want to um, how how you want to play this. It's basically just uh, create. I don't know how how you would exactly what your how you would remember the setup, but basically. You all want to put the bishops on these two squares, keep the knights in the center, move the queen and castle your king to the queen side. Yeah, I think I got that already. That makes that, that makes sense to me fully. And then you just basically just go all in. You try to attack with the queen, the bishop, and open up the age line. But if you if you do reach this position though, something like 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 one of these positions, um, always remember that you're going to be looking to tunnel. Everything is looking towards this king and opening up these lines if possible. And if you're mm -hmm. too slow, you're too slow. But most likely, you're going to end up in a 50-50 spot where you're going to win the game or you're going to lose. You're, you're basically going to win the game by force or, or, or like lose the game because you get checkmated. But you turn it into a 50-50 where if your opponent uh, does not checkmate you, you're going to checkmate them. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. So I think the main thing is just knowing and being confident and being aggressive um, in, in your approach with, with white. Okay. So what about the scenario where, in say in this situation, let's say random move, he mm -hmm. goes. What if he moves here? Well, that's a free bishop. Wait, wait, not there, not there. Sorry. Mm -hmm. What if I go here? Okay, wait, wait. Before I castle or whatever. Okay, yeah. Whatever. One sec. Uh, let me see. Random move. I go here, and then he captures. I guess I capture with the queen, and it's the same thing where I just push the pawn. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So okay, let me just push this pawn, castle the king. I'm just going to play uh, something like this, okay? So now you take the knight. I'll take back. Yeah. Now bishop h6. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if, if, if you reach a position like this in general where the capture occurs, um, even though I do this, same thing. You play h4. And actually here, if black pushes the pawn, I think you can even ignore it and just go h5. Because okay. if I take the knight, you can take the pawn. Yeah. And black can't capture with the pawn because of, of the diagonal. Ah, and you can't capture with this either because mate. Exactly. So like something like pawn takes pawn, you, you scoot the king over. And this is something as well, by the way, this probably won't happen in any of the games tomorrow, but but there, there are formations like this where black has something like a pawn right here and you ignore the pawn. You leave this pawn in front of your king, so it's kind of like a shield. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's cool. Because you see, the only way black can attack you is like if he can get a knight to one of these two squares or if he could somehow get a queen down to this A1 square in the corner. Yeah. But this pawn basically serves as a shield that protects your king from any threats. That's cool. I got that. And, and then you just basically, again, same idea. Even, let's just say I push this pawn here. You, you can I just go, go here. No, actually, but actually, this is important because what have you done now? Uh, what have I done? Can you attack my king? No. So you've so actually I made wanna... a shield too. Because what's happened is now your pawn can't... You see how this pawn, my king yeah. is safe in front of it. So now you can't attack my king. So the better play is to look to take rook maybe? You could do this, but there's a very straightforward idea, which is just push the pawn. And again, it's the same idea. Remove the defender of this pawn on each Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And again, if you get this, you, again, playing for the attack. Mm-hmm. But it's very important because actually even this position, again, it's the same thing. You can't really reach my king. The king is protected by this pawn in front of it. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in general, yeah, the, the main thing, though, is, again, even if black trades, you're looking to attack. You're, you're looking to push this pawn up the board here. So there's one other setup that I'll, I'll mention mention offline uh, I'll, I'll mention to you in a DM later but but for the most part these are the basic setups that will will occur here okay can we play a game of it so I sure, add, uh... absolutely yeah sure um, yeah. yeah all right there okay 
time. I was looking for this. Now I'm looking for this. Okay, the order's not super important, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to do that, actually. That, I want to get my um, piece out always. I don't like that because I want to get this piece out. Wait, I want to me. I can't redo. Oh wait, yeah, we're in an actual game. It, it's fine. It's okay. it's fine. This is unrated. I'll just I'll just we we just we can just start it over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just saying. By the way, it's one to know now. This is not the setup. Is it not? No, you're supposed to push pawn to d4. Okay. Let's rematch once again, okay. I see. So remember one thing you want to stop though. Remember with the pawns what you you want to prevent. Yeah, yeah. I see that he has that. So I want to push th this pawn. Mhm. Mm Very good. Block. Now I want to castle. Okay. I see that attacker and now I just want to start tunneling since my pieces are Not quite. Remember, I... remember Okay. You're supposed to move the bishop back first cuz now the problem is I can take uh, the knight. Yes, yes it's, yes. it's okay. I'll play I'll play a move just so that you can you can yeah, okay. you can just move the bishop back. Mm -hmm. Do I care about that? No, I don't. So I want to continue my attack now. Let's aim for the head. Okay. Now I want to pay attention. Okay, I think I can... Do I take... Okay, um, go here. So remember you want to attack. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking what's the best. If I take, then take. I don't know how good that is. Mm -hmm. That whole back line is decent. And then I get my queen, I guess, here. And then I can look for that. But then his rook's going to be defending that square. So I'd need to somehow maneuver my other pieces, I guess, here. But I, I think I just want to get my other pieces in the game, my other pawns. Is that viable pushing my G pawn here? That's hundred percent, hundred percent the right move. Yes, you you okay. almost always want to push this pawn because first of all, it takes away space from the knight, but also you can push the pawn and remove the knight from the F six square as well. Okay. Um, okay, I'll move here. Okay. I think takes, takes, push, takes. Hmm. Okay, let me see. Okay, not not necessarily the best move, but it's fine. We'll play this out. Okay. 
So I, I want to see you keep trying to. Okay. Okay, now, next move. Hmm. I was thinking I can look for some type of ideas like takes. Mm hmm. Very good. Very good. So, like, even though, like, here I will be able to sort of. Since I'm since I'm pretty good at chess, I'll be able to refute the idea. Even here, when yeah. you're down the rook for the knight, be, the pawns are very very weak here with the king on g7. So this is also why I like it is because even if you end up making a mistake and you're down, you still have mm -hmm. the attacking ideas down towards the king. Yeah. So now I, I, I'm actually gonna. It's actually gonna take me a second to figure out how to uh, refute this because it's not easy. Um, I'm thinking, would a good move for me be a queen to g2 and then double up the attack on top of the king and then look to win the... That's or... a good move, but there's a better square that you can go to here. Oh, I see. I go to g5. Mm -hmm. And then it's just easier. Um, what's my play? Get this, this, this. Oh, that's not actually good. I didn't see the queen attacking. So I was going to push the uh, E pawn, but I wanted to get the F pawn to defend it. So when pawn takes, pawn can take back. But mm -hmm. then the queen can actually just take. So I'm actually not really attacking the rook there. So I see why that's not the ideal move, actually. Maybe I can maneuver my knight somehow to get into the game. Well, F4 is a very good move. <laughs> Sorry, F4 is actually the best move of the position. Because your queen guards the pawn. Like, if you push the pawn and we capture, your queen guards it. Like, like, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I, see, I see, I see, I see. Oh, that's what I knew. Yeah, I thought that through. I see. Never mind. Okay, continue on. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah, F4 is absolutely the best move in the position because you're threatening to push the pawn and remove the rook, which is defending the pawn on G6 here. Yeah, that was my idea. I just I saw the queen attacking, but then I just remember that my queen could obviously just win the free queen, so he can't actually ever capture that pawn back. Right, exactly, yeah. Also, why is your rating 697? <laughs> I don't know. I lose the time. I play League in the middle of my games. So. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go here. Okay, if I go here, he'll take big, and then let me see. That's double defended. Let's just kick. Okay. Oh, well, this is completely losing now. Actually, yes, it is completely losing now. I can move right. this piece to defend. Yeah, it's just lost because I'll always be down a piece in this situation. Right, but not even just she'll be down a piece, but the thing is you no longer have a rook. Like, you always need a queen and a rook yeah. so you can attack. Whereas here what happens is I kind of diffuse your whole attack because I trade the rooks off. Mm-hmm. So, okay, you can, I mean, you can just resign here. There's no need to, or we can keep playing. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so so I just want to go back a couple of moves. So so actually, okay. when I played queen to d8 on move 24, we okay, don't need to an analyze. I'll just, back in. just pull it up on your board. That's fine. Uh, one second. Wait a momento. What I do? Mm hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Can I just deal? It's like me, I'm plugging and replugging my headset in. Hola. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, Hello? you can hear me again. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was saying go back to move 24 after queen to d8. Okay, queen to d8. And now, for example, there are a couple moves that you can play. First of all, you could play queen takes pawn on h5. Queen takes pawn and oh okay yeah because I have my rook yeah that's nice I like that so that's one move you could also push the other pawn to f5 here okay and the point is that uh, if I capture you can just capture back yeah and then you can never capture with the rook because then I just take the g6 right. pawn as well and if I take with the bishop what's your move you take with bishop here, then I can look for just taking with my knight. Exactly. And and also, if I don't take the pawn, 
your next move will be to move your knight to either d5 or e4 and then the whole king side for me just completely collapses in in like one move yeah because okay. the rook is under attack and then the pawn on g6 is also going to fall fall in so like if, move I, two. if i move the other pawn i actually could have won um probably really not because i probably could have found a defense here maybe let me see what the computer says Okay. Um, let me see. Well, okay, it doesn't matter. I mean, pro probably I can defend here. Maybe a move like, uh, I don't know, like, hmm. I can probably take the pawn and then sacrifice my rook back to c3 here. I can sacrifice my rook for the knight on c3. But in general, it's not it's not really about that. It's that, that like even here when you're behind, as long as you're still on the offensive and you're attacking, there always are going to be ideas to make checkmates and attack the black king. Yeah. So so in general, just keep that in mind that like even if something bad happens where you have to give up a rook for a bishop, as long as the black king is, is going to be under attack, you're you're always going to have chances. Okay. Yeah. So okay, Got so it. I guess okay. Let's just take a quick look at something with maybe with black then, um, because you because it is two games, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so hey, give me a second. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll sure. be back yeah, in no a minute. Yeah. All right, chat. So, okay. Um, E6 is amazing move. Void, Void Boy can play that. I mean, he'll play, he'll play the London system. I know I have to come up with something against London. I don't know what I can think of that's thematic for the London, but, um, I'll, I'll think of something in the next, th next like 75 seconds. Um, I'll think of something. Let me, let me flip the board. Of course. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, the whole reason I'm giving him the brute force attack, you guys, is because I think it's something that is more suited. It's something where it turns it into very much a 50-50, where if he plays the right moves, he gets the attack, and he has a chance. Um, 75 seconds we were counting, yeah. So so I do like it. I do like it. Um, I mean, in general, I don't like this notion of it becoming coach versus coach. What I'm trying to do is show him a basic theme, because I, do, I don't know what Void Boy is going to do. And I mean, I'm sure there are games that I can find a Void Boy where he's played it, but I don't feel that it's in the spirit for me to go and look and see, okay, he's going to play this specific move on move eight, and I can prep it all the way out to move 20. I don't think that's the, that's the attitude. I want to give him basic themes, basic ideas, so if something weird happens, he'll be prepared, and he won't just be, uh, he, won't be he won't be freaked out, and he won't lose his mind. I mean, I think it's better than 15%, but it's, it's hard to know. They cover queen b6 and queen b2 to counter the London. I mean, that's kind of weird, actually, as a system. I don't know. I, I would never teach someone to play queen b6 and queen takes b2. Be, because to me it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel thematic it's like bring the queen out and try to attack but it's not like there's no theme or no there's no rhythm to the idea so i don't really like it in general opening traps are worth worth a shot but that's why i like him playing this aggressive attacking opening playing the yugoslav attack against the sicilian dragon i really do like it as a as a thematic idea so um so it seems like a good idea and i like it I would never teach someone to straight up, like, I would not go and crunch the games and look at, like, move 10, he plays this move or that move. Okay. I am back. Hello. All right. Cool. All right. So let's, let's look at some stuff, uh, yeah, with, with the black pieces. So apparently Void Boy is going to play pawn to d4. Yeah, okay. okay. Right. And now he's going to play knight to f3. So again, against Void Boy, I'm, I'm hearing my intel is that he's going to play the London system. So this idea of playing the Stonewall to me, I don't think it's going to work as uh, as effectively. You had the game against mm -hmm. Hutch, for example, um, where this occurred and you got into some trouble. So I think what I'm going to recommend is that you play something a little bit differently. So I, I think you should play Knight to F6. Okay. He's going to play Bishop to F4. And now what you want to do, or actually, let, let, yeah, let's look at this setup first, and there's one other setup afterwards. So push the pawn to e6. So white pushes the pawn to e3. Yeah. And now the move you play is pawn to c5. This kind of reminds me of the, uh, what's the opening we played? The uh, dragon, Sicilian dragon? No, the one that you taught me, the... 
It's not exactly just like this pawn move, actually, I guess, where I take back with the bishop. The one you taught me how I can play against Moist Critical. Oh, that's the, the, um, that's the, the that's the, that was actually, it was, I think it was this, wait, Moist Critical plays E4, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, the, the pawn structure is very similar. Like, again, you try to put mm -hmm. the pawns and put the bishop here, basically. Yeah, yeah. And you will do it again, but first thing you want to do is try to attack this pawn structure. So let's just say white brings a knight out here. What you will do here is you'll push the pawn to prevent this idea with knight b5 and this very nasty idea to fork your king and your rook. Mm -hmm. And then you continue this development with knight c6 and bishop d6. Those okay. are your next two moves. Now, the reason I'm not going to give you more moves here is because it's going to turn into the same thing anyway, just with, with other moves. So white plays pawn to c3. So now here are the moves that I want you to play is bishop to d6, offering this exchange of the bishops. Do I want to exchange my bishop? Isn't my dark square like a really effective piece? Well, in this case, that... white's bishop kind of controls the diagonal already. So white's bishop oh. is better than your bishop. Okay. So bishop d6, I really think is, is, is a good move. Now let's just say white... Uh, White can play many setups, but let's just say white moves the bishop back. Mm -hmm. So now to finish your development, what would your next move be? Just get my knight here. Yes, yeah, so you could Actually, do that, but, but this... Here. Yeah, what's up? Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Um, what you want to do here is you want to castle your king. Finish the development first. So now okay. I'm going to play knight bd2. And the move I want you to play here is uh, queen to c7. So the reason that I want you to play this move is because I actually don't want you to put the knight on the c6 square. Because that's nowhere to really go, I guess? Well, well, actually, the reason is because let's just say I play bishop d3 here. You go knight yeah. d7. Now, if you were to go knight c6 here, the problem is that white could just take the pawn. Mm. And you can't take because then you would lose your queen. Yeah, yeah. So you go knight bd7. And the, the point behind putting the queen here was specifically so you could bring the knight out to this square and you no longer lose the bishop because the queen guards the bishop. Yeah. And so now white castles. And what you do here is you push this pawn to e5. Okay. And let's just say I play a random, random move like rook c1. What would your next move be? My next move here, I could just hit that. Exactly. And it's a fork. You win the knight or the bishop. Mm -hmm. So white kind of has to take this pawn. And yeah. now here is very important, actually, that you take with the knight. So now yeah, I will it's... take back. Let's just trade. Go here. And now where you put the queen is you put the queen to e7. And what basically the next, like, three moves you're going to play, well, I guess depends what white does. But let's just say white moves the rook here. You'll put the bishop on g4 to pin the knight and the, knight and the queen. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to play a random move like rook c1. And now you're going to put the rooks on, I guess it doesn't really matter which is squares, but let's just say you play rook d8. Okay. I'm just going to make random moves, and now you put the rook here. So this is kind of the dream setup, if you can get it, where you get the rooks on the two two uh, files, the, the d file and the e file. Yeah. And you're going to follow it up with, a, with the same kind of idea. You're going to bring the knight here. And you're going to lift the rook to g6, try to attack towards the king. Okay. I always lift the d-rook D instead of the e-rook. Yeah, because... I guess the e-rook continues holding the east file, so you can't ever run there if the pawns aren't guarded in it. Right, so I'm just going to make some random moves. Let's just say you reach this sort of position. This is very similar. It's not quite the same because there are no, no, no dark square bishops. But this is very mm -hmm. similar to, um, to what you were looking at in the stone wall. Yeah. Because you can just do the same thing. Bring the rook, create the threats, and then you have all kinds of ideas towards the white king. Mm -hmm. So that was some random moves. Now, I'm going to play h3 here. So now let's say I push the pawn to h3. You, you don't have access to this square. So what you do is you, do, you, do, you develop, but you do it in a slightly different way. You go pawn here. Okay. I'll just play rook Ooh. here. And then I go b7. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and now I'm just going to play like queen here. No. Uh, you can always okay. look to push the pawn, but what you want to do is put the rooks in the center again. So something like okay. something like this and play rook, rook e8. Or even here, you can maybe just go knight e4 right away with the same idea of lifting, uh, lifting the rook to g6. And long term, you are looking to open up this diagonal down towards the, the white, white king. Uh-huh. 
So this is probably... What, what else can white do here? Let me think. So I guess theoretically white can make this check on, on B5 here. So now if white makes this check right away, you can't block with your knight be, because then, then I take your bishop. Yeah, so I have to block with my other bishop? Uh, well, if you do this, I or still I can bring back the, Or I can bring back the other knight. Oh, wait, then you still take. So actually okay. here you have to put the knight forward. You have to put the knight on C6. Okay. And... I guess let's just say white plays knight to e5 here. And the now the move that you can play is just, um, again, you can play queen to c7 here. Okay, queen to c7. I see, yes. Right. And, and, and basically, you're looking to castle the king here. But because white has put the knight here too early, let's say white castles and you castle... You're threatening to win. You're threatening to win. Um, win a pawn, right? If White takes, then you can just take back. Yeah. And then if White trades the bishops and say moves the bishop back again, you can do the same thing. Just push the pawn in the center and try to open everything up here again. Same thing. You're, you want to bring the bishop and you want to put the rooks on these open open files. Okay. Um. Let me think. If there's anything else. I don't know. I mean, maybe he'll do some other setup within this, but I think the main thing is remember, bring the bishop out, castle your king, and then try to develop your queen and your knight here. Okay. Yeah, it seems pretty easy to remember, considering like feels like the same ideas in the past, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the main thing that I'm, tr that I'm trying to show, is just ideas that are pretty similar, and since you've seen them already, like you just have to figure out the right order. It's kind of like that jigsaw puzzle. It's just like, you know what you're trying to do, but you just have to put the, put the piece in the right order. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, yeah, I think that that should be fine more or less. But definitely, like, go back. I, I think and watch the vod and check the white stuff. And um, just if you need more reference, by the way, and you, you want to look it up offline, it's it's going to be called uh, basically the Yugoslav attack. Um, so so if you if you want to look it up, you you can also check that way. Yugoslav attack, not defense. It's called the attack because you're white. I'm talking about the white opening. Oh, not the black, oh, the white okay, opening. okay, okay. So it's basically with with white. Look up like the Sicilian dragon and the Yugoslav attack. Okay, and, will do. Um, yeah, yeah, that helped a lot last time when I we like had the coaching lesson. But mm -hmm. obviously, like I'm, I don't remember. Like I, I remember everything currently, but I guarantee you, in like five hours, almost all of it's gone out the window because I don't fully remember right, it. Obviously, course. but yeah, when I watched over the vod, it like just brought it all back, and I felt refreshed for the match against Moist Critical. Mm -hmm. No, so, uh, I'll do that again for sure. Yeah, it worked. It worked well last time. I, I, you mess up the opening, but even though you were down that pawn, you still found the right general ideas and concepts after that. After that hiccup in the yeah. opening, it was just yeah, it was very smooth. So I was very impressed. Thank you, thank you. So. Appreciate that. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think just just stay focused, take a look at the vod, and um, I mean, maybe he'll do something different, but I think it's a good good starting point. And uh, I think what you want is you you want positions that are more complicated because your strength relative to say Voib or the other players is that you're very you're better from what I've seen at these puzzles than they are when it's very very tricky when it's like two to three move sequences. Um, yeah. you're, you're right you're right on par with 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 where they're at. So that's you, okay. you want positions that are complicated if you can get it. I will do. We'll definitely watch the VOD over. Thank you again for the advice. And yeah, I'll right. be looking forward to any you know messages you got offline from your. Yeah, yeah I'll, and... I'll send you like one or two, one or two, and um, just yeah. about some other setups. But yeah, it should should be pretty good, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, no once problem. again, though, I appreciate it. And then also, like I said before in the past, if you ever want to play League, Call of Duty, anything, just let me know. Oh, for sure. Wanna, yeah, yeah, I definitely will. The, the only reason I haven't haven't done that is because I, I have my own event coming up in like five days that I have to plan. For chess, oh, okay. so it's like if, if I go and do that, then every, and I do badly or something, everyone's gonna be like, yeah, oh, no, I got that hundred percent. But, but sure. yeah, okay. yeah, definitely in the future for sure. All right, well, thank you so much again. I appreciate it, and have a good one. No problem. Bye, chat. Good luck tomorrow. Bye, guys. Thank you, thank you. Bye, everyone.